there's prosperity in the Bible, but the Bible is not a book of prosperity. There's holiness in the Bible, but the Bible is not a book of holiness. And if you stay and what you are teaching from the Bible is prosperity, prosperity, because it's not a book of prosperity, very soon you will enter into error. If you use the Bible as a text to preach holiness, what that's all you preach, holiness, holiness, holiness. Before you are too, before it is too long, you will enter into human tradition because it's not a book of holiness. But if you preach the kingdom, it is a book of the kingdom. And in the kingdom, the kingdom involves holiness, involves faith, involves so many things. If you teach the kingdom and your emphasis is the kingdom, you will find out that the Bible doesn't contradict. Yes, the kind of prosperity that God promises, it is contingent upon the kingdom. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and this righteousness and then the resources you need to fulfill and prosecute your divine purpose will begin to navigate in your direction you will see how everything builds up into one whole but if you stay on one of the fringes and you use the bible to establish it very soon you'll be in error as modest as modest and noble as your intentions were you were wrong because the text is the text concerning what the kingdom And people taught holiness thinking that by teaching holiness people will be holy. And after many years of teaching it, the people that were taught were skilled in human tradition and far away from holiness. Because if you are teaching holiness, you must teach Christ. Because Christ in the New Testament happens to be the source of all things. Hallelujah. Ah, holiness is the nature of God. It's not your nature. So you cannot approximate or do something and then, no, no, it's a nature. It's a nature. And then you need to know the custodian of that nature and how to align to the infrastructure that he has built in order for us to inherit everything that that nature brings. So much so that that nature will manifest as if it's our nature. So we are constituted by it through processes and dealings that it subjects us through so that eventually we can truly say that it's no longer I that live it it is Christ the same Christ that liveth in me any other thing we teach as emphasis we will not even produce that thing in the lives of people prosperity preaching has, has lingered for long how <laughs> people prosper Meanwhile, prosperity is the result of alignment, of obedience. If I surrender to God and I'm living for him, my finances are his, my life is his. It's only people that are ultimately all together submitted and surrendered to God to prosecute the policies that are being picked from the heavens. Those are the people that enjoy God's best blessings. Don't think that you, because you can be operating the kingdom of, of, of God and because of your commitment to greed, you are willing to give for selfish purposes. That's not how God makes his financially strong man. The Bible says they gave themselves first before they gave their substance. God accepted Abel first before he accepted his offering. If the kingdom is a, the emphasis, there will always be balance. But if you come and stand on one teaching, I bet you a teaching is different from Christ. So the body of Christ in the past few, about 30 years, have been doing teaching. Not apostolic doctrine. Because the hub and the center of apostolic teaching is Christ. He said, that is the secret. It was hid from ancient prophets. was revealed to his servants in the days of the first generation apostles that Christ in us is the hope of glory. That's the investment that God makes in every Christian upon which he expects you to prosecute your Christian life. The deposit of the Spirit of God. Your life of holiness will issue from there. 
it is that presence of the Holy Spirit that is on your heart that is the basis of faith. It is the Holy Spirit that furnishes faith. Your conviction, your belief system, your assurance. It is the Holy Spirit that does that. And that's the foundation upon which your Christian life is built. That's where you draw from to become a champion. That's what you live by until it becomes your life. So that you are not just changed, but you are exchanged. And it's no longer you that lives, but Christ has become your life. His promptings, his stirrings, his beckonings, his call to prayer becomes the way you live. You wait for the next prompting. And when he calls you to prayer, even when it's not convenient, you are willing to let go, to align with him. According to Paul, that is living. For me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. Is a man that has lived Christ, whose death is gain, because there was nothing left to do. Everything was done. The world is not losing. He is a conduit pipe, and he has been poured forth like a, a drink offering. He is not needed anymore. His spirit will live on through his disciples, the people that heard him and believed him. His spirit will live in them. The gospel of the kingdom. Is more radical than what the Jewish zealots were expecting. They were expecting self-determination. They were expecting to become a self-governing nation. But what Jesus gave is much more than what they expected. Now through your vessel, the kingdom of God will find occasion to come upon the face of the earth. You will become a partner with heaven. You will become a functionary of the dead heaven. You will function by the kingdom of heaven and with the attendant authority to establish the counsel of God what he gave is not something that can fail because God that gave it is, is partnering with it to ensure that it's established if God sends you and you know God that sends you, you can't fail you can't fail because he's with you on the mission